really get serious about removing the stigma of asking for help uh, and provide, so, provide counseling. Um, you know, they, they tell you now, uh, at least from my understanding of what was well, the present situation, is they'll tell you that you know, it's okay that you know to, it's it's not going to go against your your record, it's not going to hold you up, you know we're not going to think, you know, badly if you if you admit that you have a problem and that that you need counseling. But of course they do, you know, of course they do. You, know, uh, you try to be some second lieutenant who's, who's dealing with post traumatic stress and wants to make a career in the military and go through go through counseling, you're not making first lieutenant. But and get serious, you know, really, really get serious about it, and and and, and, and provide these kind of, these kinds of services. And it's not just the. I guess it's not just the military. Like you know, if you look, you think about the military as being this, this you know, this, this big, you know, big brother's military. You know, here's the military, and there's, there's the, you know, the poor enlisted man. You know, it's the whole culture. You know, it's it's uh, it's knowing that it's all right. You know, it's not just. It's not just worrying about you, what your captains and, and, and your colonels are going to think about you. But what, you know, what about the guy in the next bunk? What's he going to think about you if you admit you got a, you got a problem? Uh, it's, it, uh, it's providing these kinds of services. I guess from from the first day of, of, of boot camp, you know, to know the, like people who are entering basic training right at the beginning know that the military recognizes that these problems may occur and that if they do occur, the military is going to provide you know, help and that, it's open, and that it's not something to hide. You know, you know, say, you know, this isn't John Wayne anymore. You know, this is combat sucks and it's, it hurts and it does damage whether you receive a physical wound or not, it does damage. And if it's true that we take care of our own, then let's take care of our own by recognizing that this this is a problem, you know? and and just de try to destigmatize it, you know. You know, depending on what your MOS is, even even not depending on what your MOS is, if you if you spend if, you know if you you know if you're an NCO or, or you know you're learning organizational skills, you're learning you're learning logistics, you have you know. It's, you know, any supervisory skills, you know, leadership, leadership ability, you can apply these, you know, these skills that you've learned to, to, to anything, to business, you know, to, you know, to, to medicine, to, to science, you know, to government work, you know, anything. Uh, uh, you learn to be uh, reliant and reliable and, uh, and, and confident. You know, well, well that lasts. <laughs> not, not always, you know. Uh, I guess you know veterans were the most you know confident people would fill with you know you know self doubt you know that there are but uh, but yeah it's not just you know law enforcement uh, uh, or, or staying in the most or security work uh, you know, in anything you know how to, you know if you can if, if you're uh, you know if you're a guy who if you ever marched a, scru a squad you know from you know, from uh, the barracks to the mess hall you know you know, do you know how to be a leader. And uh, uh, and you can you can apply that you know, uh, to, uh, you know to whatever to, you know to whatever you know, business you know. you know I know in in the business world uh, guys who uh, back then when I was in who we, we drafted and or, or today I guess guys in the National Guard or, or, or the reserves when they when they're activated. And they leave their jobs. Their jobs are supposedly supposed to be there when when they get back. And I know that there that there can be resentment from people who are who are working to have someone show up after you know six months, a year, year and a half, and say, you know, I want my job back. You know, I know that they can they can be resentment on that. Yesterday I went on a I took a test to be a, a census worker. And. Uh, Veterans are given a five-point preference. If you're a disabled veteran, you get a ten-point preference. There are people there who like a little have got a bit of an attitude about that, you know. But uh, but no, I I I didn't 
I didn't think any doors would be open to me. I mean, I, I didn't, uh, I expected people to appreciate the fact that I had been in the military, but you know, I, didn't, I didn't think it was going to get me anything. You know. What I think is unfortunate today uh, is that, and not to get into politics, but the job that's being done isn't just, you know, combat operations. It's not just, you know, hunt down and kill the enemy. You know, you guys are building schools, you're building roads, you, you, you're taking care of people, you're helping people. You're trying to make people's lives safer and more, and more secure. And it's, I, I don't think there are a few people as, as humanitarian minded as, 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 as people in service, you know, and, and that message isn't getting out to the general public, which is people who, you know, give us a rifle and tell us who to shoot, you know, and it's, that's not it, you know, we care, you know. And I think if that, I think if that message got out, then I think, you know, uh, transitioning might be a little easier.